All right, finally, the good stuff. We're going to go over the billing section in a Jiro support. So in billing here, you can get there that way, or you can get there by clicking up here. Either way works. If you have an Ajiro job, not an Ajiro swoop job, but an Ajiro job that you've done recently, and you need those need to be submitted here, not on the swoop website. They'll show up there, but you have to come over here to submit them. So I'm going to show you how to submit them. I'm going to show you how to view checks, how to find invoices, submit discrepancies, uh, set up the direct deposit, and go over the billing guide. Um, what you'll do is you'll click here, drop down. You'll have your invoice here. I think this one's already been submitted, but we're going to use it as an example. They normally won't show up for 24 hours. So what you do is just hit that drop down. You can see I submitted this one successfully. Um, normally the PO, the PO will come up and it'll usually come up the type of service and the date and as much of this information as they can get to fill in as possible. A lot of times the VIN won't fill in, the odometer won't fill in, the name won't fill in. So you'll have to go back to uh, either Tobook and get that information or you can go over to the Swoop website and get the information from there. You're always going to have to fill in the miles to site and you're going to pull that out of the swoop website as well. Uh, when we get to those videos, I'll show you how that works and we'll bounce back and forth in another video and show you what it looks like. Invoice number. I always use their invoice number as my invoice number. You have to put one. So you got to put the actual miles in and then you're going to put the total invoice amount in. In this case, that invoice was uh, 80. 340 right um and for a normal job that's it there are occasions where you want to submit additional charges you have to call in to the uh one of those that one phone number remember we uh did this i think it was on the scorecard page here maybe contact us so if you have job in progress that you got to call them if there's any additional charges that need to be added on there say for instance we'll look at some of the options uh, when you click on that it could be you have to add winching you're adding labor gas storage tolls whatever it might be if it's just like a deadhead charge that you're adding deadhead miles and we'll do a video on that too later you'll add that here you'll say negotiated additional charges then you're going to put the amount of deadhead that you negotiated and in the comments what i always do is i put the approval that i get from the supervisor who approves the deadhead additional charge and you need to get a name from them and an extension number when you call in and get deadhead approved so then after that you'll have an additional amount here so you'll need to figure out what the total amount is for your service it was 8340. Let's say we had deadhead of $50, right? So then we would add that to the 8340 here and we would put in um 13340 as our total amount, but we're not doing that cuz we don't have any additional charges on this call. So that's just kind of how it would work if you needed to do that. Um so for submitting invoices, if it's just a regular old invoice, this is as far as you got to go with it. If there's deadhead miles that need to be submitted, you just click there, pick one of these negotiated additional charges. See how it says prior authorization required? It's because you got to get an approval from somebody in order to get those approved on Ajiro jobs. The Ajiro jobs are much more difficult to submit than the Swoop ones, and we'll get there when we do the Swoop videos next. Um, so for submitting invoices, that's that. And then here we'll go to uh, view checks. So if you check, you'll see all the different checks that have been paid, um, you know, over time or whatever. And you can kind of go, I can get the thing to click on there. Doesn't want to click it. Yeah, whatever. Anyways, you can view your checks here. These are uh, obviously the most recent going back in time. You can print that and you can export that as an Excel file as well. The next section here is finding invoices. So you want all invoices because it's just, you know, you 
that's it. You can search by PO number, you can search by invoice number, check number, all that, submit date. What I usually do is I just do submit date. And what will happen is that the starting date and the ending date will show up for the previous 30 days or month or whatever. It'll go from July 21st, which is actually tomorrow, to June 21st. And then you click search. And that will pull up all of your invoices and show their status and whatnot. So you can click on the status and it will sort them. But then you have to click on the next page to get there. So you have the submitted, the pending payments, um, paid invoices. And these are all, you know, within the last 30 days. If it's in audit, what you'll get there is a lot of times when you do add deadhead miles, like we did on this call here, we added $31.60 of deadhead uh, to this because it was 31 Point six miles away from our location so we want 31.6 miles driving back at a dollar a mile um, they'll go into audit usually two days max and they're out of audit these are denied uh, be for whatever reason I don't even I can't remember at this point um, but if you look at the service dates they're both pretty old and I do recall that we got these adjusted later on and paid sometimes when there's an issue like that we get them adjusted and then you go through and look at these uh these numbers here let me get back a little bit further so i can find one to show you so what will happen is you'll see um, maybe it's this file right there that we sort it by you'll see it, it shows up a little different mm, okay you see these two right here AP when the when you have an issue and you have to go back and fight with them to figure it out it'll they and they and they pay it eventually it'll show AP before and it'll come through as a, a individual separate payment so that's something that when you see that, you'll know, oh, well, they paid that invoice that we fought with them about. That's how we use this as far as um, viewing the checks. I usually just click submit date and search the last 30 days because I'm really kind of looking for what's the status of my current um, POs as far as uh, payment is concerned, like where are we at on payment. And you got to click that. And then if you click it again, you'll see submitted pending payments um pending payment well uh, it's kind of janky funky it doesn't work right every time you see it unsorts itself but that's how you find your uh POs that are pending and submitted payment making sure they went through you'll always go back to your view checks when your checks come in you can gr grab one of those and you'll see the uh POs the service dates, the status, and then you do this on a Excel sheet, pull it out, and you double check your books, make sure you're getting paid right. Um, if you're going to go and do a submit discrepancy, so let's say if you have an issue within a Jiro ticket, log in here with your information. Uh, And I need the password. Um, close your eyes. Yeah. So there you log in. And then here you can submit a support ticket. So use your PO number, your invoice number that you used previously, dispute type. So if you paid, it was paid wrong, there's payment denied. Secondary towing, there's a dispute on the mileage, the amount you're requesting, documentation, uh, you know, notes like what's going on here, why you're requesting that amount, and then if you have any documentation to back that up, you can add it here. Click save and exit. You exit out of there. Yes, we want to leave the page. 
and then you can go over here into the direct deposit section that's going to take you over to the bank of america pay mode x click on join now and you just kind of follow the instructions set your account up remember i said before that this will go a whole lot smoother if you get a business tax certificate that you can provide to them show them that you're a business and not a sole proprietor most people that won't be a problem, but some of some of y'all might need to do that. And then they have a billing guide. So how do you submit an invoice for payment? How do I enter a PO that doesn't appear? You can submit the POs over there in the submit invoices before they show up by just entering the information by yourself. But if you just wait a day, it'll um how to print a recap, view information from your last five checks, search for information on a specific Specific, I can spell and speak. Claim or check. Inner miles. And you can kind of see what you can do and how, how it works. So it gives you a little bit of a guide there. Honestly, it's really not much, much help. But uh, that's about it for the billing. We will do some videos where we go through and bill actual calls so you can kind of see what that process looks like in you know in action. Um, we'll do, we're going to do a whole bunch more videos to get real specific into things right now. We're just kind of knocking out some of the overview stuff. So if you found some value here, just go ahead and click down there below, like subscribe, turn on notifications, whatever you want or not. Either way is cool. Um, if you're not using Tobook already, there's going to be a link down below. Tobook's awesome. If you sign up with my link, I get a free month and you get Tobook. All right. Thanks for listening guys.